Thank you, coming, thank you for coming to our webinar today. My name is Kevin Grundy. I'm a member of the New Zealand Association of Medical Herbalists. I specialize in Western herbal medicine. I'm a Longevity Three Star Executive, and I am an independent distributor. Today's talk is about uh, boosting your immune system, or in other words, putting out the fire inside. Um, many people who have talked to me over the uh, last year or so uh, have heard me repeatedly talk about you can't get on top of your health challenges until you've put out the fire. So this talk is a bit about how we boost our immune system by reducing the inflammation that our body creates. So it's about our diet and what we eat or what we don't eat. So we need to clean up the diet. So we have inflammation with inside us. It comes in many forms, it hits many parts of our body. We can have brain um, inflammation, we can have shoulder, we can have um, organ inflammation, we can have digestion inflammation, of course. Then we have our joints, arthritis inflammation. These are all forms of inflammation and can be um, contributed to the foods we eat. Um, you can't see or feel it, but inflammation may be, slow, may be slowly damaging your body. Inflammation, which is swelling, of course, uh, which is part of the body's natural healing system, helps fight injure, injuries and infection. Uh, but it doesn't just happen in response to injuries and illnesses. So um, we, we think of inf inflammation as if we're walking down the street and we uh, trip over and we sprain our ankle and it gets inflamed. We, we see that as inflammation. And we understand that as inflammation because we can see and feel it. Uh, it gets really sore, it gets really hot. Um, you can't put any pressure on it. We understand that type of inflammation. But what happens if it's inside when we can't see it? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So inflammation can be good or it can be depend, uh, bad, depending on the situation, depending on where it is and how it is. Uh, when we sprain our ankle and we get inflammation in our ankle, it's our body making us to stop. We have to stop and rest. So we want inflammation at that point because it's helping us to um, help with the injury. It's going to do quite a few things, but too much inflammation can be bad. So on one hand, your body has a natural way of protecting itself uh, when it gets injured or sick. On the other hand, your body um, is fighting many other things. It can help your body defend itself from illnesses and stimulating healing. And on the other hand, chronic, uh, on the other hand, chronic sustained inflammation is linked to all forms of diseases, you know, like your diabetes, your heart disease, and your obesity. Now, these all are forms or, or uh, processes that can create or lead to inflammation. Um, and of course, it's uh, fixed from the foods we eat significantly. So eight ways uh, chronic inflammation can damage your body. Um, we can damage it um, through memory problems or uh, connectivity decline. Uh, we can have increased um, cardiovascular problems, uh, abnormal growth with cell, healthy cells, compromised digestion function, loss of muscle tone. We can have weight gain, accelerated skin, aging, and pain and loss of mobility. These are all forms of chronic anti-inflammatory. So we, you know, these are things that we're not wanting our body to go through. These are stresses of our body. And so several factors that can cause inflammation. Of course, as today's talks about, the foods we eat play a major role in inflammation. Having a, a blood and sugar balance in our body also uh, leads to inflammation. Leaky gut, that's when the, um, the your tissue and your digestion system, the perforation gets swollen and inflamed and it allows um, bigger proteins through its membrane. Uh, obviously chronic stress, poor sleeping habits, um, these are all causes your environment and of course infections. So having a look at what a good cell is versus a healthy cell, uh, sorry, a bad health. Bad cell, same thing. So an unhealthy cell, uh, the protection around the cell gets degraded and it's no longer able to transfer um, 
food, information, nutrients, it can't get into the cell and equally it can't get out of the cell. And so if we've got this problem where good nutrients can't enter and we can't get, a, get rid of waste, then, then we're going to have a problem with um, the, the, the way that the cell develops. So here we have three pictures of a uh, colon, inside your colon. So you can see to the left, there's a nice healthy colon. Um, the center one, um, uh, that's got lots of ulceration. You can just start to see the ulcerations forming and then you've got the Crohn's disease, one on the right, very ulcerated, you've got lesions starting to grow. And so people, if you've heard me talk about um, repairing the digestion system, this is the part I refer to. These lesions are what we've got to repair before we can start to heal the, the other processes in our body. If we can't absorb properly, then how can we take these nutrients, these good nutrients, and deliver them to the parts of the body that need it? If we can't absorb them through the, the lining of our, of our digestion, we need to repair this. This is that repair stage. So you can see with Crohn's, um, it's affecting a, a fair chunk of the um, the digestion tract, the intestines, the large intestines, where the ultracrosis uh, colosis is more affecting the, the, trans, uh, the transverse colon, where it uh, starts to leave the body, gets really inflamed. We could also get blocked arteries through poor um, fat intake, um, through um, poor central fatty acids, weak lining, um, artery lines, they can all lead to um, blockages of the arteries and they form and it's very hard for nutrients, very hard for blood to flow through the arteries when there was clogging like that. And of course, through lifestyle, we can put a lot of harm, a lot of damage onto our liver. You know, our, our liver is the, is the big filter process of our body. It takes all those chemicals and it's got to break them down um, so it can leave the body. And so, um, so we've got to look after our liver and our, our liver is part of our digestion. And I talk about it quite a lot. We really need to get to know our liver better and start to work with it um, a lot more effectively. So foods can cause inflammation. Uh, when you have arthritis or inflammation, your body is an infl 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 inflammatory state. Um, what you eat may not only increase inflammation, uh, it can also set up for other chronic diseases, as I said before, like the heart disease, obesity, and diabetes. You know, so, so certain foods are going to play havoc on our body. Sugar. It's a menace. It's hard to resist that dessert, those pastries, that chocolate bar, that soda, and even that, that fruit. However, noted in the American Journal, which is very similar to the New Zealand uh, medical um, system warns that uh, processed sugars triggers the release of inflammation and the little messengers called uh, uh, um, cyclocones. Uh, so these, these sugars, these table sugars, is what we've been brought up with. This is the, the nasty. If anybody's ever been to a sugar manufacturing plant, you'll see how they make sugar. They, 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 they crush the cane, they get all the juice out, then they start to separate. They separate a lot of the nutrients and they uh, send that out to farming, that's called molasses. And then the, the white sugary substance gets uh, taken off and dried and turned into white table sugar. Um, and it is, the white table sugar has basically zero nutrient value left. It's all been given to the farm animals in molasses. Um, so it's certainly the one to take out of your diet. <clears throat> so table sugar is made of glucose and fructose that the body converts food we eat into one of these, either a glucose or it's going to be turned into a fat. The body um, regulates the glucose in the bloodstream. You know, fructose is primarily converted into fat. Fructose is distributed, disrupts, disrupts the signal from the gut to the brain. So it disrupts the, um, that communication. And you know, when we're full and we, we, we've had enough to eat, you know, we, we've eaten enough, stop eating. Normally, there are sensors in our digestion and as we eat, um, those sensors send that signal back. Or when you eat very fast, those signals don't get back quick enough and we overeat 
or if there was a, an issue and the body's senses aren't working to what they should be and the body wants more, just keeps eating more, give me more, feed me more. So fructose is, uh, is also addictive. So it's not just the sugar, the, the fructose itself is addictive. Um, and so that's wanting you to have always have that sugar, that sugar fix, that sugar fix. So fruit contains fructose, but it still has all its, all its fiber. We call that a whole food. And so when we squeeze fruit, or when we separate the fruit from the pulp, all we're really doing is separate all the goodness that pulp that helps clean out, clean our digestion system, and we're replacing it just with sugar. Yes, there's some nutrient value in it as well, but a lot of the nutrient comes from the breaking down of the fibers rather than just the sugar content. The researchers have also noted that fructose causes inflammation within the cells that line the blood vessels. And so the, the, the cells that line the blood vessels uh, they get inflamed, and these are one of the uh, risk factors for heart disease. And one study in mice uh, fed with high uh, sucrose diet developed breast cancer that spread to their uh, lungs, partly due to that infl inflammatory response from sugar. Sugar knocks the immune system. It also here to, uh, it helps um, impair the uptake of uh, omega-3 central fatty acid. And we know the importance of essential three fatty acids. It's up there with oxygen. And we need it for the nerve system. We need it for skin. We need it for heart function. We need it for um, hormone function. It's an anti-inflammatory. And so omega-3 is an important one. So when you have a sugar that's switching off one of your mechanisms as an anti-inflammatory, uh, all you're doing is just creating more harm and, and more confusion to the body system. Processed meats, so consuming processed meats uh, also lead to these problems. So it's hard on the liver, it's hard on the stomach, it's hard on the colon. Um, so there are many types of processed meats. So I'm not talking about going and getting a nice lean steak or a nice lean chop. We're talking about meat that has been chopped up into fine pieces and then they've added stuff to it. Uh, these are called processed meats. Now, when they chop meat up, they have to add a uh, a chemical called nitrate. And that nitrate is an antifungal, antibacterial, antimicrobe. It kills stuff. That's what it's designed to kill. So when you have processed meats, you're consuming a chemical that is designed to kill bugs. And I'd just like to remind you that remember that we're one big bug colony. So the minute we start putting foods in us that are designed to kill bugs, we'll expect the unexpected because things are going to go wrong. So processed foods, it's my pet hate, it's one of the things we need to start eliminating out of our diet. If you like processed foods, manufacture your own or go to a butcher and insist no nitrates, please. Um, so processed foods also contain uh, another product called AGE, uh, and that's something that our body reacts to. Uh, so AGEs are formed by cooking of the meat and some other foods at high temperature. And so these, uh, these particular AGC, they really harm our cell. They're, they're like a, they're terms like a trans fat, uh, and they're very carcinogenic, and uh, they, they load our system, and they're traveling all around them. So we need to keep these under control. Again, how? By don't burn our meat and don't eat processed foods. So all of these, all diseases, all, a lot of these diseases we can link now to processed mood or processed food or high consumption of processed food. Remember, it's that rule of moderation. If you go and have some salami this week and don't have salami again for another month, well, who cares? But if you have loved your salami and you have it every day, every second day, you've got problems. If you like your lunch and you have it every day on your lunch, you've got problems. So we use this rule of moderation. So although there are many other factors that contribute to colon cancer, one mechanism is believed to be the colon cell inflammation response, and that is processed meats. So omega-6, uh, we need omega-6. Omega-6 is important. So omega-6 fatty acids are essential fatty acids that the body needs for normal growth and development. The body needs a healthy balance of omega-6s, but here's the problem. We need a balance between omega-6s and omega-3. 
they help, they work with each other and they help balance each other out. One's pro-inflammation and one's pre-inflammation or anti-inflammation. So they work hand in hand. So excessive consumptions of omega-3 can, can trigger the body's production of pro-inflammation chemicals. And so when we consume omega-3, we actually trigger a chemical reaction and things start to ache. They, they, they inflammatory, the pro-inflammatory chemicals start to work. So these fatty acids are found in things like your, your corn, your, your safflower, your sunflower, your grape seed, your, your soy, your peanut, your vegetable, your mayonnaise, you know, all those canola oils that used to be called grape seed. You know, Dr. Wallach calls them death in a bottle because that's what they are, the death in a bottle. They, they, they lead us out, they've got trans fats, they create inflammation of our arteries, and there's so many studies on trans fats. We'll talk about that in a, in a moment. For saturated fats, you know, there have been several studies shows that saturated fats trigger um, uh, adopsy, which is a fat tissue inflammation, uh, which is <clears throat> not only an indicator for heart disease, but also um, helps worsen the inflammation of that, uh, that problem. Of course, we know these main culprits, they're your pizzas, they're your cheeses, they're your big sources of saturated fat. Now, we need saturated fat. Don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying no, no, no. I'm talking about balance. We need to look at balancing our saturated fats and looking at the quality of the fats that we, get that we consume. If they're a processed, heavy saturated fat, they're going to be harmful. But if they're a natural um, saturated fat, then... Um, comes from lean meat, so then we're not going to have the same issue. So other culprits include these uh, meat products, especially that cooked red meat, uh, full fatty dairy products, pasta dishes, and those grainy-based desserts, all saturated. Trans fats, this is one of Dr. Wallach's pet hates. He hates trans fats. Oils in a bottle all create trans fats. Uh, known to trigger inflammation, um, can be found in most of our fast foods. Okay, you, you, your fish and chips, your, your frozen breakfasts, your crackers, your donuts, anything where they've used a cheap oil and they have fried it is going to be a trans fat. Uh, they're created by adding a, a hydrogen molecule to a, a saturated fat um, and that helps to liquidate it and makes it easier to use um, and puts oxygen and oxidates the fat. It's often listed as partially uh, hydrogenated uh, and its ingredients, and ma most margarines contain saturated fat, uh, trans fats, um, because they're a, uh, made out of a canola oil or some form of nasty um, plant-based oil, and they've been hydrogenated. You know, it's the hydrogenation which really helps. It's the like, it's like the nail in the coffin. It turns what is a bad thing into a super bad thing. Gluten. Yeah, we all understand the problems with gluten, it, it, how it activates um, problems in joints. Uh, people with sensitivity um, to gluten are going to have all sorts of problems. Uh, gluten uh, may set off an inflammation response that damages the small intestines and some causes pain joints. So, you know, we, we, we talk about going gluten free, we talk about the people who have reduced their gluten and how much better they feel. That bloating disappears. Um, you don't lose weight when you go gluten-free, unless, of course, you're cutting back on all of those carbohydrate gluten. But gluten-free, you tend to lose bloatingness. You lose uh, that mass, so you don't lose weight, but your clothes size will get smaller. You deflate. Um, those guys or people who have a very tight, large tummy, that's gas. So when you go gluten-free and you start to reduce um, these gas offtakes in our gut, you decrease this pressure. It goes down. Your shirt size goes down. You feel like you're losing weight, but your weight stays the same. That's gluten because it has a reaction inside our gut. Um, there may be over overlaps in which uh, people with arthritis also have gluten and, uh, and synthesis sensitivity, or they may have celiac or some form of other problem. Then, of course, the other one of my pet hates, dairy. Dairy is uh, also a source of inflammation, and, and we read 
all sorts of things about dairy. And if you read any pro dairy website, anything to do with, they sell it, okay, they'll talk about being anti-allergy and, and it's good for the throat and good for the digestion. But I tell you, all of the medical courses that we go on, and we have to do a lot every year for our qualification, all of them talk to us about all the studies, how dairy is one of the culprits for allergies. Okay, so if you remove dairy, many things disappear. The phlegm in your throat disappears, the coughing in the back of your throat disappears. Okay, so, so dairy is very problematic. And it's aspirated if you've got a flu. That runny nose, that child with that runny nose, okay, we can help remove that runny nose and that glogginess by getting rid of that dairy out of that equation. So milk allergy is an, uh, is an abnormal response by the body's immune system to milk and uh, products containing milk. It's one of the most common food allergies in children. Cow's milk is usually caused uh, causes uh, milk um, allergies, but milk from sheep, goat, although we don't really have buffaloes in this country, but other mammals like that can also cause a reaction. Might be slightly less, some might be slightly more, depends on your sensitivity. Studies have connected dairy with the uh, disruption of the gut microbe, which is what I was talking about before, and how it's really dis disrupting that gut microbe. Now, we were, we were led to believe that, that dairy is good for that gut microbe. Dairy is a probiotic. Dairy has the aphidophilus, which is partially true, but unfortunately the good is not outweighed. So the good is outweighed by the bad, and it's those reactions we have which stops it from um, um, being consumed by many people. So milk allergies, which differ, uh, differ from, from person to person, they do. You know, one person may show all the symptoms, one person, the next person may show, show no symptoms. So some of them are like wheezing, coughing, itching, tingling, feeling around the lips and the mouth. These are just, just some of you drinking something. That, that swelling of the tongue or the, the, the throat, the lips, you know. So these are just, and some of them are slight. Some people just drink milk and all of a sudden, oh, they just feel a little bit pressure on their lips. It's just swollen ever so slightly. And about 20 minutes later, it's, it's gone. Coffee, shortness of breath is another, is another common one. But that wheeziness in the hives and the itching, they're, they're the most common we see for our practice. Um, signs and symptoms that take a little bit longer to develop. Um, People's stool can be a bit looser, get a little bit more diarrhea, um, abnormal cramps. So you might end up, you know, you've got this pain in, in, the, in the lower part of your back and you think you've hurt your back, but it's really your stool. It's, um, it's, it's inflamed some of your intestine and it's pressing on the intestine wall. And as it goes around, it's giving the sensation of like back pain. Okay, so runny noses, if you've got um, a rhinitis, it's that runny nose. Well, that's potentially just that dairy just it's affecting your, your upper sinuses. It's just slightly making it inflamed and it's giving you that one runny nose or that, that watery eyes. <clears throat> or in babies, it could be colic. Um, so yeah, these are all things that dairy does. And this is a small list. You know, the list is quite large. If you hear my talk about digestion, you'll get the bigger picture. Alcohol is another big problem here. It's a big burden on the liver. Remember, the previous I talked about the importance of our liver. You know, if we age our liver, we're going to age ourselves. If we're going to harm our liver, we're going to age ourselves. If we keep loading the liver the way we do, we're going to age ourselves. So we need to work with our liver. If we're going to consume alcohol, then start to a regime where you look after your liver more. Okay, so you'll notice with, with a lot of my practice, I don't work on don't do this. I work on, well, if you do do this, well, then think about the consequences and work with those and, and help. And, you know, if you, were, if you drive a vehicle on a gravel road every day, you wouldn't drive it with city tyres, would you? You'd put uh, off-road tyres, the same sort of thing. So excessive use uh, weakens liver function and disrupts other multi-organ interactions and can cause inflammation. In one study, levels of the inflammation marker which is a cpr they use increased in people who consumed alcohol and the more this is the alarming part the more alcohol they consumed the more this inflammation marker climbed okay 
Gout is a good example when people drink, they start to develop gout. Now, gout is crystallization of uric acid. Okay, it forms and it tends to form in the lower abdomen area and your feet, but they can form anywhere. Okay, so we, we've got to start working with our system properly. So people who drink heavily may develop problems with uh, bacterial tox toxins moving out of the colon and into the body. This condition is often part, or we call it leaky gut, it is just one component of leaky gut, and that can, uh, can drive widespread inflammation that can lead other organ damage. Alcohol suppresses the system. Alcohol suppresses the immune system. So if we have health challenges, this is one of the things we need to cut on the head straight away. And when I talk about stopping things, remember the body takes 90 days for a cell to develop. So when we go off things, it takes some time for the body to stop reacting to it. And so if you're no longer drink, drinking alcohol, it will take you a week or so for the body to stop reacting. If you're consuming dairy, it's going to take your body a week or two before it reacts. And dairy is a, is a silly one because dairy, you only need to have a piece of bread which has been made with a bit of butter on it or has been made with dairy. And that person who is sensitive to that dairy will start to get the, <coughs> in the back of their throat. Okay? And the only way you're going to get rid of that is just get off turkey. Get off turkey. <laughs> Go cold turkey on, on dairy. Okay? And at least try and start it for a month and then go on to dairy. And then you'll have a better idea of how it's affecting you. So life's full of decisions, isn't it? You know, we, we come to these crossroads. Roads. And we all saw this at the end of lockdown. One of the busiest days on record for takeaways was the day we finished um, lockdown and we moved into level, was a level two. Um, was a level three, well, level three it was. Yeah, they were queuing up for an hour, hour and a half at some of these fast food places. Guys, we need to make a better decision. Those same queues were not at the fruit and veggie place. You could have gone and bought fruit and veggies without having to queue up in lines. So we need to make better decisions in our life. And it starts by what we purchase at the supermarket. So beating inflammation. How do we beat inflammation? We've got to cut back on those foods that promote inflammation. We've just got to start eliminating. doesn't matter what health challenge you have. The fact that you have a health challenge means that you need to start cutting back on things. We need to increase the proportions of our fruits and veggies in our diet. Eat more fruits, real foods, real fruit, real vegetables. Okay, and you, we're, we're, we're lucky down in this part of the world. New Zealand, Australia, we have an abundance of fruits and vegetables at our fingertips. Make fish your main protein because you need to get more omega 3s uh, into your diet and different sources of omega 3s. It's not just fish, avocados, um, nuts are great sources of omega 3s. You know, like I said earlier, it's up there with oxygen. So, eat the, be eat the best, but leave the rest. Okay? We've got to eat the best, but we've got to leave the rest. How do we do that? We've got to eat the five colours. I don't know where, if you remember back in your school days, we still see it today, the importance of five colours. When I went back to um, learning about medicine and then how the body worked, and we, we did the, our course on nutrition, we actually did many years' work on nutrition, they taught us the importance of the different colors and what they work, do in the body. So it's important that we get our five, our five colors. Um, they help balance uh, what we eat. A lot of our vitamins come from colors. Our, our plants, our, our fruits and vegetables, they can make a vitamin. They can make an amino acid, but they can't make a mineral. Okay, so we need our colors and we need to supplement. So here is four powerful herbs that help fight inflammation. Green tea. Green tea is a great source of, uh, of um, nutrients. It's a great tea. Longevity uses it quite a bit in their products, the, uh, the ACT product. 
is, uh, is green tea. Um, and I think our uh, pollen burst may also have green tea. Holy basil, it's another great herb, uh, helps fight inflammation, helps reduce, reduce, reduce pain. Turmeric is a great one, helps uh, reduce inflammation and it helps repair tissue. So if there's any bone tissue, hard tissue, soft tissue damage, then the turmeric is going to help repair that too, as well as reduce the inflammation. And our favorite ginger, I love ginger, it's a great digestion stimulant. It helps with any digestion inflammation. Um, it's a good circulation, so it's going to help re uh, move fluid through the body. So just, just some quickies. These together make a beautiful tea. Um, you can add a bit of honey uh, or stevia. I prefer to see stevia. But anyway, just, just some tidbits. So where would you go with 90 for Life? You know, 90 for Life is... Is, is, a, is a way of understanding what we need from our falls food. So what's the message? This next part, I'm just going to quickly go through it because we've got to remember this. You know, how do we fight inflammation? Well, we use our 90 for life. It makes it very simple. What is the 90 for life message? We need 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and two essential fatty acids. Yes, did you notice two essential fatty acids? Omega-3, yes, is one of those. Okay, these make up our 90 essential nutrients. This is the starting block for, for boosting this immune system. Essential nutrients can't be manufactured by the body and deficiencies of these essential nutrients lead to disease. And there are up to 900, yes, 900 dis deficiencies, deficiency diseases. 900. So there's some pretty simple steps. Dr. Wallach has, has helped refine them and define them. So three steps reducing inflammation and boosting your immune system. Step one, define a category. We have a category system that uh, determines your health. We work with the category. We use the appropriate pack for that category and we dose accordingly. Now, it's, we've got to remember, if you've heard me talk about this before, Dosing is important. It's not just about what you read on the back of a label or on the back of a bottle. Those are based on averages and the average is based on 50 kgs. So if you have a bottle of selenium and it says that you need three tablets per day or three capsules per day, that's for somebody who weighs 50 kgs. What if you're 100 kgs? Do you still need three? Are those three gonna fulfill the same uh, volume as somebody who is um, 50 kgs versus 100 kgs? No. That's why you need to double, in this case, your dose for your weight. If you're 150 kgs, you will treble it because you're just bigger. Okay, so you need more of it. Okay, and that's maintenance. Well, what if you've got a health challenge? You've got to double your maintenance dose. We've got to get ahead of your health challenge. We're not just trying to look after it. So we double, in some cases, we triple a maintenance dose. You've heard me talk about it before when I'm in the clinic doing work. If I feel that somebody's given me the yogi and my, and my uh, glands come up, bang, we go for practitioner dosing. That's six times the dose over a very short period of time. We knock it hard and then we go back to that maintenance dose. So we use the appropriate pack and the appropriate dose for your weight and health challenge. And of course, we need to what? We need to clean up that lifestyle and clean up our diet. Okay? So we need to eat, eliminate, exercise, sleep, and support. That's it. Three steps. Okay, just a quick overview again for those ones who have not seen the overview form. You can download this off the net, ask your upline. Okay, this is readily available free of charge. We work out of 10. The reason we work out of 10 is because we can see a better scale. Very hard to see uh, one to five. You're not quite sure whether they've had a slight movement. Uh, for better or for worse. So we use 10 as our gauge. We look at each part of our body and we list the, um, we list the pain that we can identify based on a number. So if we have back pain today, uh, our back pain is, oh, not too bad. I'm walking around. I've still got it there. It's not crippling me, but it's a bit of pain. I'd give it a five. But if that back pain, I was in bed and I couldn't move, I'd give it a 10. If I had no pain at all, I'm a zero. Likewise, if I've got eye problems, 
I might uh, have cataracts, I might have I uh, need glasses. So today, um, I would probably put that as a, as a 10. Um, or I'm not wearing glasses, but my eyesight's slowly going. Uh, I should really wear glasses, so I'd be a five. So understand, so we, we look at our challenge and we see how severe it is and we give it a mark accordingly. And we do it today, then we come back and we revisit this in 30 days, just to see we're on the right track and then we readdress this in 90 days. Dr. Wallach says, don't bother him for the first 90 days because remember, that's how long it takes for a cell to develop. And so we need to see the cycle of 90 days um, for things to change in our body. So we use that right pack. Okay, once we've, used, we've worked uh, watch category, we identify the pack. If it's a hard, uh, hard tissue category, it's the healthy bone and joint, soft tissue, healthy heart and brain pack. Blood sugar, healthy blood sugar pack. And likewise with the digestion, a healthy digestion pack. So we've made it very simple. We've taken the guesswork out. And of course, if you're uh, one of my patients or if you're part of my team, you'll understand the first place to start is always going to be digestion. We always start in the digestion. We get that working because if we're going to invest in our health, we would want to know it's going to work properly. And it's only going to work properly if if what we're putting in our mouth is going to be absorbed properly, we need to start with digestion. So how do we work with longevity? Of course, it goes without saying. We have what we call the healthy, guess what, start pack. This is where we start. This is our anti-inflammatory pack. If anybody has read the Clemson report, it quite clearly talks about how the Beyond Tangy Tangerine has an awesome anti-inflammatory component. So it starts here, and then we add what we need. And of course, what have we got fires going inside us? What have we got inflammation? What have we got a bacteria? What have we got virus? What have we got um, things going on? Well, we then use some of Longevity's other products. We have the killer body. That's a great immune booster. We've got the oxybody, this seasonal immune pack. That's cell shield for helping to rebuild any cell damage. Frucoid Z is a great anti-inflammatory, again, helping to rebuild cell damage. Enzymes trying to break food down before it gets to the point where it's digested into the system. Very important that we break our food down. And of course, colloidal silver, yes, longevity has its own colloidal silver. You now, colloidal silver is used throughout the medical system today. It's used in bandages, it's used in all forms of uh, pharmaceutical and, and, and hospital systems for its antibacterial. It's a great antibacterial and we have a great product. These are all immune boosting products. And the list does not stop here. I could also add the um, the gochi, uh, or the, the I can also add the um, the rainforest. Uh, I could also add the beta glucan three hundred and the beta gluten five hundred. These are all great immune boosting products. But remember, none of these are going to do much work if we keep putting fire on to the fire, or should I rephrase that, if we keep putting petrol onto the fire, it will not go out. We've also got the Pro Range, an awesome range of products. There's the Pumeric, helping with that inflammation, helping repair the damage. We've got another great one there for the brain, helping to stimulate brain function, getting the brain working. Okay, and of course, all the other products we have also. Well, that's brought my first part of my talk uh, to an end today. I hope uh, everybody's enjoying that and found that very informative. Um, I will be, re uh, I have recorded this today and I will be putting this up onto our, um, our YouTube channel. So um, um, watch our Zoom connection and, and our Facebook um, for when it is done. And uh, so I'm now going to uh, pass you over to our lovely Sally. Um, she has uh, got some great information to share, just like uh, uh, our lovely Karen. So today we don't have Sam. Um, unfortunately, Sam is a very busy uh, young lady and um, trying to tie her down at the moment. It's just really hard. So we're, we've given her some time off. And so Karen and Sam, uh, so Karen and Sally are going to uh, look after her part today. Uh, so today's talk is a time to remember when. Okay, so we're talking about four products, uh, 
good the good night roller bottle heaven sent roller bottle uh, earth sent um, blend and a productive blend these are great great essential oils i can't wait now to hear uh, karen and sally's talk so i will just do a bit of a change over here okay sally can you come in i'm going to keep the screen up this time sally so you just start talking okay can you hear me i can indeed uh, excellent hi guys um thanks for your talk kev nice to hear you talking about fruit and vegetables always love that um so tonight our, our set of oils are all about your day and making you feel good within it really um so i'm talking about the first two oils um, and the first oil that we recommend you use in the morning um, or to start off the first thing in the morning would be the productive blend. That one looks like that. Um, so it's got uh, three oils in it. That, that's bergamot, lemon and orange. It was um, a blend that was created by Leanne. She tends to um, use her intuition to create her blends, whereas Kent, uh, her husband, he creates some of the other ones. Um, he likes to use the constituents, um, so the chemicals that are in them, so um, more chemistry-based. Anyway, there's, so Leanne, when she picked them, she, she used the key emotions in order to pick which ones to put together. Um, so lemon she used it because um it, it created excitement um was re revitalizing reliable cheerfulness and connective um it, it tends to help you get things done it, it, it's lifting um orange oil is key emotions are create creative patience hope gentleness and cheery it works on the right side of the brain or the creative side of the brain so it, it helps you open up to problem solving and then bergamot so bergamot is, is known as um your prozac in a bottle or st john's in a bottle so it, it's great for depression and and, and just lifting you uh, so so a mixture of, of of lifting you and and bringing in the left and the right brain makes this um essential oil great for getting you up out of bed and getting you going um we've got she gave us one um, thing to make with it, and I think we're going to put this up on the um, WhatsApp page after we've finished. Um, so the productive wake-up call, she recommends using it in the shower, and you mix it um, in with, with some dead sea salts or some salt, and you um, shake them up, and um, then basically put a quarter of a cup on, on the floor of, of the shower and, and then and, and stand on it and, and, and um, while you're washing yourself and this will, this will wake you up. So it, it's awesome as a, as a, um, a good wake up call in the morning. Um, so, that's, so that's productive. And the other one I was going to talk on was heaven scent. Now heaven scent, so that's the next oil of the day. So heaven scent, and it's in a roller bottle, um and it smells wonderful this this blend um it supports overall body black balancing so both physically and emotionally heaven scent will generally pr promote an uplifting mood and support the mental energy as well as brain function needed for a positive and appreciative attitude it has proven beneficial in cases of brain injury i, I imagine it and again it's, it supports the left in the brain left and the right um, side of the brain function. It is best to use heaven scent at the beginning of the day. It works well in companion with the earth scent blend, which is best used at night, which Karen will talk about next. So the key emotions of heaven scent is intuitive, thankful, uplifting, humbleness, and welcoming. And at this point in time, who, who doesn't need all of these emotions um especially with the mood around these times um so heaven scent has um aramis bergamot black spruce cedarwood clementine geranium white grapefruit lavender neroli sweet orange osmanthus rosewood 
scotch pine in your ling ling. It's a bit like the, the Big Mac burger. It's got a lot in it. Or the kiwi burger, actually. Um, so it is one of the nicest scents that, that, that she's made as far as blends go. It is, it, it's, it, it's very easy to, to inhale. Yeah, so you can rub it on, on your wrist um, throughout the day as you need. Um, and yeah, it'll give you a lift. So that's pretty much my oils tonight. Um, next, I'll hand you on to Karen and she can talk about the next two oils. Right. Thank you, Sally and Kevin. So um, as Sally has said, uh, the oils for this month are all about calming and focusing of the mind. And I actually really, really do like these oils because they can be used every day. And um, as Sally just said, talked about heaven scent. It actually is a, it's got a beautiful smell with it too. And it's great for um, diffusing and I diffuse it in the house. So Sally's just gone through starting your day. And I'm actually going to talk about uh, the end of the day. And those two oils are going to be Earth Scent. Can you see that? Which you get, it comes in a, the 10 mil straight bottle. And then I'm going to talk about Good Night, which comes in a roller bottle. Okay, so firstly, um, Earth Scent. Earth Scent here is a grounding oil. It actually smells like dirt, hence the name. And um, it's and as well as um, being a night oil, this one here is also a, you can use like middle of the day through the day. And for example, if you're a person um, or know of a person who rushes all the time through the day, uh, always on the go, mind is everywhere, and thinking about what you have to do for the day, well. Earth Scent to the rescue. Once you take Earth Scent, it will calm you down and keep you focused on what you're doing. So it's, yeah, that's what it's really good for. Um, actually, uh, just so that you know, Earth Scent was uh, developed by Kent for Leanne King. <laughs> uh, for that reason, really, because apparently that's what she's, um, what, that's what she can be like. So yeah, de designed for her. But, at night is when a good um, earth scent is at its best. When you're lying in bed, um, you're wide awake, uh, your mind won't shut down, you've got that mental chatter in your mind and you're thinking about the day you've just had and going over that and then you start thinking about what you've got to do tomorrow, your mind just won't shut down. So if that sounds like you, well then once again, earth scent, that's where it comes uh, to the end of the day calms you down and so you can have a good night's sleep, okay? Um, now, this oil is actually also good for people who have got insomnia and also uh, re restless leg syndrome. Um, interestingly, interestingly enough, <laughs> I'm as bad as Kevin. <laughs> um, so this is worth a, tr um, a try if you do experience uh, any of these issues, okay? So, good night blend, on the other hand, the roller bottle that we get, um, was, was also created to help you have a good night's sleep, okay? Um, now, funnily enough, the good night blend is actually the earth scent blend. It's got all um, the ingredients that uh, earth scent has. So what Kent did, he took the earth scent as a base and he added uh, six more oils to then make, um, so, so this, this is a blend and this is a blend. So he put the two blends together and came up with good night. And the reason he did that is because he used the um, earth scent as a base and then the other six were added uh, just to supercharge and enhance the effects of the uh, earth scent. And uh, I'll just talk about in particular two oils that he did um, put with the good night. And one of them is the calamaris root, okay? It was put in um, the good night bottle for the purpose of uh, clearing and relaxing the mind um, to enable a good night's sleep. 
in the past, this uh, calamus root was actually used to treat um, people with strokes and Alzheimer's. And another one that he put into the good night is catnip, okay? Um, that was added because it's a more sedative and calming effect. So it calms the nervous system and then the calamus root helps the brain function better, not to be um, active, but just to help fall asleep instead of your mind uh, just wandering off into other directions. And uh, actually catnip is an, ex an expensive oil on its own and uh, you're probably very unlikely to see it as a single oil, um, so they've put it in with this blend. So basically the difference between the two, you might wonder because I said they've got the same ingredients, is that basically essential um, earth scent um, you can use through the day as well. So it's, uh, it can calm you through the day, plus it can calm you through the night. Whereas good night is only for at night if you're having sleeping problems because of the catnip, okay? So you have it before you go to bed. And so obviously that you wouldn't go driving if you'd had this because you'd be falling asleep with the, um, with the, with the catnip. Okay, and as this month is all about the elderly, the uh, children and our pets, I just thought I would um, touch on that a bit. So with, with dogs, um, you use it as per body weight. So you're not going to use the same amount on a chinchua as you would a big, huge dog. So it's all on body weight, a bit like us. And it's good for calming them. So you just rub it through their fur. And it's also great for children who have autism or maybe ADH, ADHD, because it's very calming for them and helps them to be a bit more focused. And just same with the, with the elderly. In fact, in our, I think I've got it here somewhere, in our, um, uh, where is it here? Mm, with our aroma share, we actually get recipes with, I think, I was going to get Kevin to put it up, but I think he hasn't. Um, we get recipes with our, um, and one of them is, what one have you got up there, Kevin? All right. I'm just going to tell you about the one for the um, elderly. You can get the uh, um, the good night and put it with uh, jojoba oil, and then you can just uh, rub it up, up and down their foot, up their leg, and the same with children. It just calms them and helps them sleep better. And um, with, with some recipes for earth scent, um, someone actually suggested, because uh, one thing that earth scent is also good for is uh, your skin, okay? And someone actually suggested to put, uh, earth, well, they put earth scent with, um, uh, with well, coconut oil and uses it as a face moisturizer. Yeah, there Kevin's got up there. Oh, where are you going with that, Kevin? Yeah. So yeah, that's the one I was talking about there, the Young Jewity Goodnight Roller Bottle with the um, jojoba. Okay, and this one here, I thought that was quite intriguing. You get the coffee filter and you put some earth scent or productive, uh, or any oil that you want actually, and put it somewhere. Like if you want to make your toilet smell nice, put it behind the toilet or you want to make your room smell nice, put it behind something so people aren't going to see the, all these, oils, uh, these coffee filters all around the place. And it just makes that nice um, smell uh, around the house. So yeah, I thought that was some, some good tips. So that's now just the end of my talk. So what I would like to go through with you is the prices, just so that you know what a good deal that you are actually getting with the aroma share. So if you bought all these four oils on their own, you would be, at those three alone are, um, yeah, those three alone are $77 on their own. You cannot buy productive from Longevity as a, on its own, okay? So, but if you put a price onto that, you'd be nearly up to $100. Um, $100. And, um, but with the aroma share, you know, a $72 Australian, including GST for all of the oils, and New Zealand is $77.50, including GST. So you're really, really getting a good bang for your buck by getting these oils in the aroma share. And also the heaven scent, the earth scent, and the good night, you can buy all as roller bottles with the, oh, actually, I was going to bring it, I had it, I've got it here too, but never mind. Um, you can buy it in what's called uh, Create a Perfect Day, and it's a big pack, and it's got about eight roller bottles, all about creating your day, and those three oils actually come in that pack. 
So, um, and that's worth, uh, what I say, $93 Australian plus GST and then $96 plus GST in New Zealand. So, um, hopefully you got some information out of that. Thank you for joining us. And just so that you know, next month is uh, bone and joint oils. So we're going to be looking at contemplative, bounce back, spearmint and marjoram. So go out and buy them this month and we will talk about it next month. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's, thanks for that, Karen. Uh, I'll just repeat myself there. Then. Those talks are just getting better and better and better. The information on that is just getting so valuable. Uh, we'll definitely start to get some more of this information up on the screen uh, as you guys talk, because um, I think yeah, it's quite valuable, certainly being able to share some of those recipes like we've just done. Well, you know, so, so education is very important to us. Um, it's certainly something Dr. Wallach has, has pushed um, all the way through his career. Um, education empowers us to make better decisions. Um, so if you wish to learn more about things, you know, Doc's got great CDs, great books. Um, and so there's an awesome library. So this library is available here in New Zealand. We have pretty much all of Dr. Wallach's stuff here in New Zealand and Australia. It will either get shipped out of our office here in, uh, in Hamilton or it will get shipped out of our office on the Gold Coast. Um, so remember, um, knowledge is power, and power, knowledge is, uh, enables us to make better decisions. And we need to make a better decision if we wish to control our health better and uh, improve ourselves going forward. You know, So the next time you sit in that cafe and you're reaching out for that uh, nice uh, um, screen, uh, cream donut, think again. Go and get one of those fruit salads instead. Okay, guys, once again, thank you for coming along. My name's Kevin Grundy. I'll see you again this time next month. Bye for now.